whenever you are. Okay. I guess we could say good good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are in the uh, in the U.S. You may be on the other side of the country with a still, I guess, eleven o'clock. I guess if you're coming from one of our uh, potential island countries, it, I don't know what time it might be. We want to welcome you to uh, getting the best of your first meeting with uh, NACAA at First Timers Orientation. Keith Meichler, I'm your uh, president-elect, and I have with me. I'm Heather Slusser. I am the chair of the Early Career Development Committee. And we hope this is beneficial uh, to you, this little hour of uh, what to expect and what to do at NACA. So if you want to advance. So the purpose of the webinar is to help you have a beneficial uh, first time AMPIC. And you're going, AMPIC, it sounds like some type of car. So that stands for Annual Meeting and Professional Improvement Conference. And we're just kind of here to guide, provide you some guidance and how to navigate through because it can be it can be overwhelming. Uh, provide you with some conference highlights and provide you with a taste of what to expect. I remember my first conference was probably way before many of you ever thought about being an extension. Well, it was 1996. Uh, it was held at the uh, Opryland Hotel, which is now the Gaylord in Nashville, and there was uh, two conservatories. And Scott, I, I know I don't know if Scott Hallbecker was there. He may have been. He may have still been a toddler. Um, but you could get lost between the uh, the two uh, conservatories and actually forget where it could not find your room for hours. Just it's quite a big place, and the one in Iowa is going to be nice. We're all in one house to one facility, and they're 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 promoting it as a air conditioned hallways leading to all the meetings. So I think we're going to need some air conditioning and while we're in Iowa for sure. Dress business casual during most meetings. If you're receiving an award, dress up when you receive it and dress up. Uh, for me, dressing up for me means I've got on a tie and a coat. That means I'm business professional. If I'm receiving an award, uh, Heather, you may want to address how uh, ladies would dress. If you're a lady that prefers skirts or dresses, I'd put one of those on. Um, I tend to do more of like a pant, a pantsuit. So I'll wear a jacket, nice shirt, and nice set of slacks and shoes. So, And then also a dress appropriate for your tour. You may need a hat, you may need sunscreen, you may need insect repellent, and you may need to make sure you have, uh, some may say no open-toed shoes. You need closed-toed shoes, depending on where you're going. So pay attention to your tour description. You'd hate to get out, get on the bus and be headed to a tour and get ready to get off. And they're like, sorry, you have to stay on the bus because your shoes are not appropriate. And that would be so no one gets injured while on the tour. Next. What is the purpose of AMPIC? Growth fund relationships. I mean, uh, for me, it's been relationships. One of the most important, important things in purpose was developing relationships with people from around the nation, and there's not a state that I cannot go to. It drives my son nuts that when we travel, I know someone in every state, it seems like, and I usually call them while we're driving. It helps my, it helps my drive time, cuts it down, feels like it cuts it down some. But you get to make, you become friends with people around the nation with similar likes and similar dislikes. It's fun, but also the purpose is for professional growth. You do have opportunities to do presentations, posters, uh, but the fun part is the relationships that uh, that you've made over the years. And that's one thing that I encourage you to do is attend attend the first time orientation. It's going to be new this year, a different style this year. Attend the luncheon, but attend the hospitality suites as well. Get to know people while you're there. It's something that uh, you, you it's, it's, it's a win-win for you. Trust me, it's been 28 years worth of this for me. And I've enjoyed every minute of it. And I look forward to these meetings every year. Yes, it's a, it's a lot to prepare. It's a long way. You're out of your home, out of your county for several, several maybe two weeks at the most. But it's worth it. Trust me. Next. Ah, uh, yes, I just did this just a little while ago. I'm, I'm looking at it. So what, this, there's an app for that. And it's the, I was using the WebEx app. Now, I'm a little bit perturbed because I'm, I'm not able to get my full points. And I'm not the leader, and I have I have I have this competitive streak in me, and I am like trying to find my find my leaderboard. There's this cat by the name of Kevin Cam out of Orlando, Florida, and also uh, an Engel, a, a Kinson, a I'm seeing I'm going to butcher names because I'm just going to stop, and even a Cynthia Gregg. 
that are above me and I cannot get my points in. So I'm putting in the code, either I cannot type, I cannot read, but I cannot get my full points. If so it makes you feel any better, Keith, I couldn't get all my points to load either. <laughs> and, you know, and these, these may be, so I'm an Android user. And so maybe it's, maybe it's anti-Android, but it's working fine so far, but you want to go and do, this is actually pretty fun. Uh, there's quite a bit of stuff on this app. I hadn't paid a lot of attention to it until just a little while ago. And there's the, uh, there's the game that I'm talking about, it's NACA game, but scan this code, you'll pop into the website or you download it into your phone, follow the directions, which for me can be difficult following directions because I don't like to read directions. And then there's all these places you can get points to add. Now, it says that there will be door prizes given during, during an AMPIC or our meeting. And one of my door prizes, I don't know if anybody can probably even see that. That's a business card holder, Scott Hallbaker, from years ago. One of the bronze, brassy thingies that I won at a door prize. Sits on my desk. It's a, probably the best business card holder I've ever had. And I, I, I like using it. So download the app. Participate while you're there. You're only going to get out of this what you put into it. So I encourage you to put as much in as you want. Heather? All right. So now we're going to run you through kind of the day, starting with Sunday. I uh, do realize there are some pre-tours that are happening before. So if you are coming in before Sunday, ignore that. But we're starting at Sunday because that's when the, the main conference is starting. So the first thing that you're going to do when you get there, uh, whether you get there Saturday night or Sunday morning, is you're going to get registered. So head on over to the West Entrance Level 3, look for that registration table, follow the signs, follow other extension people. We kind of stick out, so just look for us. Um, Head over there, get your name badge, and you're also going to get a program booklet. The name badge is really important to hang on to because it's going to have your meal tickets in it. And it's also going to have your tour bus ticket in it as well. If you find out when you're going through your meal tickets that there's something in there that you don't have and you want a meal or you want to change your tour, uh, talk to the people that are at the registration table because sometimes they can get those switched out for you. Not all the time, no guarantees, of course, um, but sometimes people turn them in and say, hey, I'm really not going to attend that session anymore, or I want to go to a different tour, or you know what, I'm decided I'm not going to eat lunch that day, and they'll turn those tickets back in. So if you didn't sign up for something because you didn't know you were supposed to, talk to the people at the registration table. The other thing is, uh, you don't have to bring a lanyard. They will provide a lanyard for you, but if you got a special lucky one at home, bring it with and your program booklet, put your name in it because they all look alike, but go through it and go ahead and highlight those uh, for whatever sessions you want to see and go to. The other thing is if you're walking around and you're like, I am lost. I have no idea what's going on. I don't know where to go. I don't know who to talk to. Well, look for the people in the red ISU shirts and caps. OK, so people from Iowa are going to be standing out. So make sure that you look for them. If you can't find them, look for Scott. He is normally in a station close to the registration table. Uh, so if in doubt, he tends to know everything. So ask Scott. The other thing is, if you can't find Scott and you can't find someone in a red ISU shirt or cap, just ask anybody that's standing around. We're all extension agents and odds are somebody has been there before or been to an AMPIC before. So ask them what's going on and where you need to be. All right, the trade show. The trade show, Keith mentioned about fun. Well, the trade show is a fun place to go and it is a great place to pick up swag. I got a drawer full of pens and sticky notes and post-its all because of last year's trade show. So check it out. It will be on Sunday through Tuesday in the Hall B at the Conference Center. Keith mentioned it earlier, but the first timers orientation is going to have a different structure and feel than in years past. So this year at 3 p.m., we hope to see you all at Buzzard Billy's. Uh, so I don't know. Can you guys see my mouse? Probably not. But on the right hand side here, I have a, a screenshot. The little yellow blob on the left side of Third Street is the convention center. So as Keith told me, you honestly just walk right out the door, walk down the street about a block, not even, it's like half a block. And then here's Buzzard Billy's in that lower corner there. So really close. They've got great food. And you use that first timer orientation time to meet, 
other people, get to know some of your committee chairs, get to know your national chairs, um, and just really eat a lot of good food. Keep in mind that you don't want to eat too much food because after the first timers orientation, we will have the welcome to Iowa dinner and that's at 430 in Hall B. You do need a ticket for that. So make sure you bring your name tag to Buzzard Billy's with you so that you can get into dinner. After dinner, we're going to have the opening session. That'll be in the Grand Ballroom at 7 p.m. During the opening session, um, NACA President Phil Durst is going to give us a nice welcome, say thanks for coming, kind of give you a lowdown of what's happening, or you'll hear a lowdown of what's happening at the conference for the week. Um, and then we'll have a presentation of the colors. And your state presidents, if that's you, then you get that honor. But typically the state presidents will be the one that does it. They will walk their state flags across the stage and get to present them. So that's kind of a neat thing to do. And I know it's pretty coveted by the state presidents here in Wisconsin. Following the opening session, you're going to get some wonderful ice cream. The ice cream will be available both Sunday and Monday night in the pre-function area level four. So don't miss out on that because I can tell you that's one of my favorite highlights. I like ice cream being from Wisconsin. And then on Monday or Sunday night, you will have your state pictures. So in the back of your program booklet, it will list by state who is getting their pictures. The order in which they are listed is the order in which the photos will be taken. Don't be late. They will skip you. So whoever wants a picture or to be in your state picture needs to be there ready to go. Um, so if like Wisconsin is called and I'm not there, they're not going to wait for me. They're going to take the picture without me. So make sure you're there to get your picture. And as Keith already mentioned, there will be hospitality rooms. The hospitality rooms will be Sunday night and Monday night. Check the registration table. They'll tell you what the rooms are and who is hosting them. But normally they're hosted by people that are running for a national office or sometimes the state that's putting on Ampix next year will be hosting a room. And as he said, it's a great time to meet people. Um, there's normally free food, free drink. Sometimes they have some giveaway prizes as well, but you can mingle, make friends and enjoy yourself. So Heather, back up one slide. If you can. Another one? Nope, nope. Uh, that was actually to the, where it says scholarship live auction. I'm sorry, two slides. I don't Remember think we that. covered that scholarship yet, did we? Oh, well, maybe we have, maybe, oh, I'm over here looking at another screen too. So no wonder I'm over here screwing up my own self. I'm not, I'm going to talk about, never mind. Just forget what, y'all forget what I said. I got okay. too much on my mind. So it's Monday. It's actually Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? It's Monday. Today's Wednesday. <laughs> today's, today's Wednesday, but this, we're going to talk about Monday. General session, eight o'clock in the, in the grand ballroom, official welcome to Iowa presentations of state bidding to host the 2026 meeting and keynote speaker, Secretary of Agricultural Tom Vilsack. You won't want to miss it, but one thing you'll also probably have already had is a, there'll be an AA awards that morning if you're getting an achievement award. So you go to the hospitality suite on Sunday night and you partake of a smidge too much. Make sure you can get up and be at your award thing or the function you're supposed to be at on, uh, on Monday morning. That's just a little heads up. Uh, sometimes people have a little bit too much fun at the hospitality rooms and Monday morning's rough, so uh, just remember, we're all adults, and uh, you're expected to be in places, uh, what did I say, 2026, 2027? Yeah, I'm missing sorry. the wrong one. I missed a year. Oh, yep, okay, I see it. Scott, fi <laughs> Scott fixed us. Well, as, as usual, Scott is repairing the errors that his, uh, his folks make all the time. You'll get to know Scott well over the years. Next slide. Poster session. For those of you that may be competing in the poster session, this is going to, you actually, your poster will be hung already. This will be the, I think the Meet the Authors will be at 10 o'clock. And another place to mingle with uh, coworkers and folks from other universities. And a great place to look at a lot of research going on by county agents and specialists around the nation. Next. Committee workshops. So see your program. Now, someone had asked about the agenda. And Scott, I answered it, and I may have answered it incorrectly, but they asked, will the agenda be placed in the app? And I'm assuming the agenda will be placed in the app as soon as it's finalized. Is that correct?
Okay. All right. Y'all can look at it see in the chat picture. Yeah. Uh, so next. You guys can't see the chat. Scott said that the program's online on the AMPIC webpage. Yeah, First I'm time not, attendees. Go ahead, I'm Scott. Not, I'm not certain what the since we didn't actually handle registration through that app, I'm I'm not certain uh, what I was going to be able to do. Uh, but I'm I'm sure that there will be a way that they will get agenda items in there. It just may not be your own specifically what you registered for. Okay, and that may be what the question was. And so I'm looking I'm looking at the agenda through the app right now, and it is it is in there. And then there says my agenda. Uh, and it says, like, seems like nothing is planned for that day. I guess I can go in and plan stuff for that day and put in my agenda to make sure I know where I'm supposed to be. First time attendees luncheon will be uh, Monday at 1145. It is a required ticket. Uh, and we do not this year, we do not have a you're not going to be spoken to by ad administration from any university. We've got some other uh, long time. Uh, uh, I was going to say old county. That's not the right terminology because I'm an old county agent. A uh, longtime experienced county agent, uh, Cynthia Gregg, who pa is a past president, and also Sherry Sanders from Arkansas, should be quite entertaining with those two ladies. Uh, next. Of course, improvement seminars, see the program for topics and locations, get programming ideas, and I don't know how many presentations. I know in the past we've had 125 up to 130 presentations in different categories. So just check your program and find what you like. And just know that there's no way you're going to see them all. But always feel free to, add, you know, if you see something you like, reach out to that county agent and ask for a copy of, the, ask for a copy of their presentation. I've never minded mind sharing what I've done in the past. Next. Regional meetings and meet the candidates. So that'll be at 3, 3 p.m. So you'll go to your regional meeting and that's also where the candidates for upcoming offices such as vice president, which will be, I think, Teresa Steckler from North Central and JJ Jones from Southern are running for vice president. Uh, Melanie Rose is running for treasurer and uh, Donna Bielik will be running as secretary. Those are at 3 p.m. And I will be bringing candidates around at that time to introduce themselves. And then uh, State's Night Out, which is uh, you go with your state, 430 location, depending on your colleagues and what they've set. Hopefully your, set, your state has set a State's Night Out. If not, it may be State's Night In. You'll, when you have this many people in a, in a community or in a town, sometimes there's not enough restaurants to go around for everyone. So hopefully your state has, uh, has planned their State Night Out. Yeah, and I don't know how it works in other associations, but for us, it's our president that makes reservations ahead of time, so they figure out Thanks how many people are going, and so uh, maybe check with your president and find out if they've got anything booked or who's taking care of that if they're not going. Next, there's a slide I was looking for that I was way ahead of because I've got it on <laughs> another screen over here. The scholarship auction, silent and live. You don't want to miss this, even if you're, have, you're broke, have no money to spend, still come you want to come and it, it's entertaining just make sure if you're if you're watching a lot sit on your hands if you have no intention of bidding usually you have a bidder number but don't 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 blink don't scratch don't itch you may buy something you didn't plan on buying and the picture that's got the uh the gentleman holding the that's a mule that is a picture i took in my county and that mule's name is uh jack and his last name is Kegel, and we'll let you fill in the middle name. But I'm sorry, I said mule, but that is a donkey. I'm, I correct myself. That is the donkey. That's Jack Kegel. And uh, he entertains me while I'm doing research work out at the farm. He likes to nudge at my tailgate. He likes to, he likes to get out, too. Uh, he's quite a friendly little guy. But that picture was just a picture I took with my cell phone. I took it to, uh, I think I sent it to Walmart had it printed, and then I went to Hobby Lobby and found a frame and brought that as, as a contribution to the scholarship auction, and I think it went for several hundred dollars, and it's nothing fancy. It's just a picture I took. I thought that would look good frame, and I'll, I'm going to do that, and with that, you, add, you actually meet your scholarship is what you donate. You, what you donate 
to the Torsa Scholarship Auction, the value and stuff, is how you get your scholarship met, requirements in order to apply for one. So make sure you come to the scholarship auction. It's uh, it's a good time. You may see you may see a Christmas gift there. Who knows? You may see something you want to take home with you. Heather. All right. So jump into Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday morning is going to be the Achievement Award breakfast. Um, not sure if any of you, if that's why you're coming for the first time this year or if you're still newer in your careers, but definitely something to strive towards. The Achievement Award is for members that are less than 10 years of service, and they are recognized for excellence in their field. So definitely a good thing if you've got a promotional package you need to put in. It always looks good to say, hey, I was the Achievement Award winner. Um, if you do go to that, if you notice from the pictures here, everybody is dressed up a little bit, you know, a grade above business casual. So if you're going to the Achievement Award breakfast, make sure you are dressed up for that. Um, we also have the voting delegate session on Tuesday morning. So the voting delegates are normally selected by their state and the number that you have is determined by your membership level. So uh, like here in Wisconsin, we only have one voting delegate because our numbers have shrunk, but um, Scott can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you get one voting delegate for your first 30 and then like every 30 after that, you get another voting delegate. Um, the voting delegates vote on the association business so it really is an important job because they help determine the direction that we take as an association there will be more professional development opportunities on tuesday uh, tuesday is the start of the super seminars super seminars will happen both tuesday and wednesday the super seminars are a longer format so when you get your program you'll notice that most of the professional development talks are about 30 minutes in length uh, those are put on by the extension development council and the professional improvement council of our association and the super seminars uh, tend to be about three hours three to four hours in length for lunch we will have the awards luncheons so that will be like communication awards search for excellence awards again that's going to be an opportunity for you to dress up and look spiffy while you are getting your awards and being recognized for all of that hard work that you have done if you have never submitted say this is your first, you know it's your first year it's your first year in an extension career and you've never ex submitted or even know anything about communication awards uh, talk to your local association your state association because it is a great way to get recognized for the work that you've done at the state level but also at the national level as well and the best part about it is you can earn money Tuesday night, we get the opportunity to go to the Iowa State Fair. So make sure that you don't miss out on that. Um, get your corn dogs, your fried foods, fried pickle on a stick. That's what I'm going for. So um, check it out. Oh, Wednesday. So when, Wednesday, I mean, so you're all, you're almost ready to go home. And it's uh, to me, it's like, oh man, it's, it's gotten over so quick. So 8.15, we're gonna be in the, uh, it's the general session oftentimes called the closing session of the general sessions. Starts at 8.15 where you'll have greetings from a uh, director of Iowa State Extension, uh, Dr. Jason Henderson. Uh, then you'll have comments from uh, USDA's NIFA director because Dr. Mersa, M-I-S-R-A is how his last name is spelled. Those will be state membership awards. There'll be updates from uh, OYF uh, from Amber Yutze. Uh, introduction of uh, Jolene Brown, our uh, keynote speaker. Uh, and then the cap, also the capstone speaker as well. Presentation of a cowboy hat that Oklahoma always gives to the president. And then comments from me, and who knows what I want to say on looking ahead. And then uh, announcements for later on uh, for, for the remainder of the conference. Next. Then there's even more professional development. Super seminars, uh, again, since Development Council seminars and moving on forward. There'll be more professional development for you there. I think we also have the... Uh, Leadership, Leadership Academy is going on as well, and you may be part of that. So be looking looking at that coming ahead. Next. Ah, yes, formal pictures. If you are getting an award, you have and you would like to have a formal picture, or you just like would have a like to have a formal picture made. So you've got your family there, or you're you're coming in as a chair or something, or a vice chair or you need a, you want another AA picture or a DSA picture made, or you want to have a group picture made with some friends. A couple of years ago, three of my, two of my buddies, we 
did some goofy photos while we were there. So that's at 430. That's in the pre-function area. Take take an opportunity for the photo. It's it's free. You don't have to pay for it. They're not going to send, they're not going to give you a package. They're not going to walk around the corner. We have a package set up for you going, hey, here's your package. Uh, which one do you want? And do you have a credit card available? We're not going to do that to you. It's the photos come from our uh, photography contract and they do usually do a really good job of taking some great photos for us. Next. Oop. Sorry about that. And then, and then we have the annual banquet that evening, and that's where we celebrate our Hall of Fame winners and uh, DSA winners. Starts at 6.30, so you'll come down, take your formal picture, and you'll be, you, we'll start seating around 6, I should, I should know since I'm responsible for the program, around 6.15 will be, uh, no, around around yeah, around six fifteen, you'll be started to be seating in there. There'll be reserved seating for doors open at six. Scott's correcting me again. Doors will open at six. You'll come in and you'll sit anywhere the seats are not reserved, which will be the majority of the place. We have a, uh, I think over nine hundred seats available. It's a really nice, going to be a nice, comfortable room, and we'll have a good evening. And so at six thirty, we will start by recognizing uh, having the DSAs come in, and then we'll move on. We'll move on through the banquet. Have a great, a great evening. Uh, we'll also uh, have the introduction of the meeting coming up in Texas. And so uh, you see the picture to the right is Alan Galloway was president when it was in Chattanooga 2018. Gentleman shaking his hand is Greg Bowman from Gordon County, a good friend of mine. One of the guys that was in the, one of the goofy shots that we made. Next. All right. So Thursday, it is technically the last day of the conference. And I don't want to say it's the best day, but it gets you out of the conference center in that sense. So normally by Wednesday, I'm feeling a little cooped up, feeling a little bit like I'm in my office all week. So I can't wait till Thursday. So Thursday is your professional improvement tours. Um, make sure that you have your ticket or you've swapped it out for another ticket. If you decided you didn't want to go to the session that you signed up for. Um, also make sure that you are paying attention to any announcements that are being made during the general sessions, because sometimes there's some slight changes and tweaks that have to be made to these sessions. So listen for those announcements during the general session. Breakfast will be early that morning. You don't need a ticket for it. Um, just head on down, get your breakfast, and then pay attention to where your breakfast and loading time are. Those will be listed on your ticket. So if it says your loading time and the bus is loading at 7.15, don't show up at 7.30 because your bus will have left. So make sure you're there like 10, 15 minutes before your bus is supposed to leave so that you can get where you need to be in case they start loading early. Uh, bring your camera or bring a phone so you can take pictures because you're going to see things that you probably haven't seen in your home state um, or maybe you have, but there's always going to be a different twi twist on it. So um, also, as Keith said, make sure you have read the description and you understand the clothing requirement in case you do need those closed toed shoes because we don't want you to miss out on this fun activity. When you get done with your tour, the bus will drop you off at the Suck Up End Zone Club and you will have a really awesome meal. Uh, last year, we had some steaks and potatoes. I ate way too much, but it was definitely worth it. Um, I don't know what good yummies they have in store for us this year, but you're not going to regret going. Um, when you are done eating, the tour buses will be staggered to take you back to the hotel or the conference center. So feel free to hang out and mingle or to head back to the conference center if you need to get packed up for your flight in the morning. Um, I did see, oh yeah, souk up, sorry, not from Suka. Iowa. <laughs> but so yeah, make sure you're checking all that out and eating some really good food. Did you guys see, I thought I saw a hand was raised. Did someone have a question? I'm looking. Okay. I don't see it anymore, but I thought I saw it out of the corner of my eye, so. Okay, well, I'll continue. Uh, just general information, things that didn't fit in the other parts of the presentation. Uh, if you have a water bottle with you and you can bring it, do so. Uh, there will be water filling stations throughout the Iowa Event Center. So bring that water bottle so you don't have to get the little plastic cups that hold about two sips of water. Um, there is a cash bar during the um, 
Keith, what'd you talk about? The auction, the silent right. auction. Yes. So um, it is. it says cash bar, but it is really a cashless cash bar. So make sure you're bringing your credit card to pay for any drinks that you would like that night. Also, in the morning, there will be the opportunity Monday morning through Wednesday morning to participate in early morning exercises from 630 to 730. They will be using stretch bands in yoga mats, and this will be in the Hilton Ballroom A. So if you are interested in that, you are encouraged to bring a yoga mat because they won't necessarily have them there. Um, also keep in mind that if you don't want to pay for parking or if you're staying at a hotel that charges for parking, there are various free parking garages. You just need to ask for details at the registration desk to get information on that. And next. One, one thing that was not on the general information was if you if you're not going on a tour on Thursday and you do want to go, you want to go to the dinner Thursday night. Buses are normally at the hotel and they are leaving to take you over to the dinner area and bringing you back to your hotel area. So don't think that, but well, I don't go, I don't go on, I didn't go on a tour, so I'm not going to get to have dinner. No, dinner is available to everyone. There will be transportation available for you. You won't be expected to drive over. You can get on a bus and ride over. Uh, usually, and Scott, you may have to put up there. I think that will usually start around 4 30 or 5. Buses will leave a hotel to take you over to the dinner if you did not go on a professional improvement tour. And then, uh, you know, make plans to attend in Dallas uh, in 2024. And I was looking for my, if you see me looking, I'm looking for magazines and stuff laid out on the floor. Because I've got stuff everywhere trying to prepare for the meeting, at, getting myself ready for the meeting in Dallas. It'll be in Dallas, Texas, July the 14th through 18th. There will be a video shown uh, Wednesday at the end of the DSA banquet, uh, welcoming everybody to Dallas. Uh, it's going to be in one, one hotel called the Hilton Anatole. Um, Hope forward. Hope you plan on attending and see you in Dallas. And I'm sure it's going to be just as hot there as it's going to be this year. So uh, we yes, we have these in the summer. And I was telling someone that uh, Georgia hosted the meeting in 2002 in Savannah in July. And I don't know what was worse, the heat or the gnats. But and I, I don't think there's gnats in Iowa. It's just going to be hot. And most of us can deal with the heat. We're county ag agents. And with that, I mean, I guess we can entertain questions if anyone has any questions to ask. But one thing is, don't ever attend and feel like you can't ask a question. Scott is always very welcoming to trying to help people resolve issues. Myself and other board members will do our best to work with you, committee members. We want you to have a good time. We, want, we don't want you to leave and go, well, I'm never doing that again. Uh, we, hope, we hope you don't say that. We hope you intend on coming back many times over and over again. And developing the friendships that um, I've developed and Heather's developed and Scott and all the rest of us. This is a this is a great opportunity. And I encourage you that you bring your family because we do we do have programs for them. I know it's quite a, it's right there at school starting time for some folks. But when my son was younger, uh, I drug him all across the nation uh, with me to the point of when he could no longer come because of sports and everything else. And now he's in college and He's uh, he's he's been too cool for dad, but he's getting back, coming back around that maybe dad's not as bad as he thinks. And so, you know, bring, I encourage you to bring your family with you. Uh, have a great time while you're there. And we hope you enjoy the meeting coming up in Iowa. Iowa has done a, put in a lot of work uh, to make this a great meeting for you. And I hope you enjoy it. And I know for the state fair, and I think I saw Kapil on here a minute ago. All I want to know is where I get my tickets to the tractor pull for the state fair. I know you're thinking tractor. Yes, I am going to the tractor pull Tuesday night. It is Tuesday night, right? At the state fair. I'm going to the tractor pull. I'm, I'm going to have a fried Twinkie and some turkey leg and a whole nine yards, folks. So, so have some fun while you're there. It's okay. All right. It's okay to have a little bit of fun. So Kapil, just tell me where do I find my tractor pull tickets? That's, that's all I need. Oh, you're muted. Can you, can you type for me? of where I can find tractor pull tickets. How do I get those for Tuesday night? And you got to go look at the state. You need to go online to the Iowa State Fair and check out the program of what all is happening at the Iowa State Fair. It uh, is yes. unbelievable, the entertainment that's available there as well, too. Did you just, is Capilla, are you live now? 
Yes, I am live now. Uh, the host has unmuted me so I can talk. Uh, yes, we have uh, Iowa State Fair information will be available right at the registration desk. Uh, catch Des Moines folks will actually have their display table right at the registration desk. And that is to get you guys oriented to what Des Moines has to offer and what Iowa State Fair has to offer. And they will be able to help you with the entire fair schedule. Uh, if you go online to the Iowa State Fair, you can see the program right online at the Iowa State Fair website. And you should be able to get tickets right off of their website. And there is, there is free music, free entertainment uh, at the State Fair that you don't really even have to purchase. And then there are a few featured events at the State Fair, which you have to buy tickets for. Which one I know is a tractor pull, and I think it's $40. But hey, how often am I going to be in Iowa and attend a tractor pull at a State Fair? It's been a long time. So, you know, there's all kind of entertainment. I encourage you to look. It's one thing I've been looking at. It's going to be a, it's going to be kind of a great time in Iowa. And just remember, you get out of it what you put into it. So have I, fun, I like, make some friends. I I like my pork chop on a stick, and I like to go see the butter cow. Hey, there you, pork chop on a stick and the butter cow. I mean, what more can you ask for in a state fair? I mean, we're going to have fun, folks. If you don't have fun, it's really your own fault. Trust me. So we hope to see you there. Come and join us. I'm looking to see if we have questions. There is a question about um, the code. If I recall correctly, when I put it in, it was case and space sensitive. So you have to make sure NACA 2023 is all one word and that NACA is all capitalized. And so Jesse, I know I had I had issues and it was, it, and I hate to say it, but when I was trying to get it started, evidently I was, it was user error on my part. And once I finally got into a certain section, I wish I could go back and do it with you and go, hey, this is what's going on. I had to go through several steps and I tried to put a code in, tell me the wrong thing, wrong thing, because I hadn't completely set up. I, you had to go in and put a, make a username and password before you can actually put the code in. So you download it, then you set up kind of a profile with username and password. Then you go and search for our program, and then you enter the code there. Maybe that, that'll that help. That may be where you're having issues. I don't know. And I and I use Android, so I've had issues with uh, two codes not working, and I've done like Heather said. I've, made, I've looked for case sensitive, making sure I have quotes and things right, and it may just be a, a an issue with an Android. I don't know, but I'm not going to be left out of those points. I will get my points one way or the other. Just saying, I'll figure it out. I get it. I have a competitive streak somewhere. I don't know where it comes from. I want to see what kind of door prize. Yes, Kapil. Uh, yes, I just wanted to circle back on that parking question. Uh, parking in uh, Des Moines is not free. Uh, there are several garages there, but you have to pay for them. Uh, Iowa group, as we were planning, we have contracted with two parking garages where you can park and then you bring that ticket with you to the registration desk and uh, we'll issue you a get out of jail free card so you can get out of that parking garage at no cost. But we do want you to look those two parking garages up. Their addresses are listed in the uh, county agent magazine that was uh, in April, but those two names are there. We'll, we'll post those two addresses to the website too. So when you are driving in, just make sure you go and park in those garage, two garages. And I see a question uh, here that says, I'd like to ask the obvious question, but no one can answer. Why is registration so expensive for each day I registered for one day? Scott, I've got answers. They may not be the right answer, 
but there's there's a lot of money tied up in facilities at these events mm -hmm. and there's the full registration and if you look at any any event that you go to that has multiple days there's the overall registration and then there's the one day registration and one day registrations are always more costly than just the full registration that's just the way it's set up there are a lot of expenses involved here I can assure you that your registration fee really doesn't cover everything. That is, that is a true fact. The registration does not cover the full expense of everything that goes on. There's a lot of money that's been raised by Iowa. It's helping offset costs along with national putting in money to offset costs as well. Registration is just part of, part of the meeting fee. One day registrations are always more expensive just due to facilities use. And that's the best answer I can give you. I've, I've seen people buy two day registrations, three day, three one day registrations and spend more than what you would for the full registration. I think it's important to note, too, that, you know, when they set the cost for the conference and everything, they're not budgeting to make money on it. It's just to try and cover the costs. So and that's and that can be that's getting harder and harder to do as time goes by expenses a lot of expenses have gone up i know i was just in uh was in nashville tennessee back at the first part of june stayed at a holiday inn outside of vanderbilt for a track event the room was three hundred dollars for a holiday inn breakfast was not included and neither was parking time i paid for breakfast and parking we had closer to $400 for one night at a Holiday Inn in Nashville. It's, it's expensive. All right, so Sue asked the question, can you explain what is considered a first timer? She says, I am a first time attendee, but could not register as a first timer. Yes, I can I can answer that question. Uh, if you have been in extension for less than five years, then you are considered a first timer attendee at that lower registration cost. But if you have been in extension for more than five years, uh, we you you do not get that first timer. Uh, that's the policy that is followed for you being a first timer at Handy. Other questions you guys have? Do we have any more questions? No. Right. Hearing none, seeing none, or not hearing, hearing, seeing none pop up in the uh, in the chat or in the uh, ask question module. Oh, Kabil, yes, yes. Uh, one one other thing to watch for: uh, the Iowa group is sending out newsletters. Uh, we already sent one out earlier. We will be sending out uh, one here early August and then one just prior to the conference. Uh, go through that newsletter because there is information contained in that newsletter that pertains directly to the conference. So highlights that you need to know about, uh, at least review that newsletter. Uh, if you have time later on to go through the details, that's that's how your time works out, but there will be things showing up in that newsletter and we are sending it to everybody who is registered. Be on the lookout for the newsletter coming out from Iowa. I know I've already received one. One thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about the scholarship auction, you may have seen something come from Stephen Hadcock, the scholarship committee chair, asking for people to bring items for the, the auction that evening for Monday evening. Yeah, I keep on get, getting the days confused. So bring, you know, if you got something you'd like to put in the silent auction or the live auction, you can go ahead and enter it online from the email that Steven sent. He sent a link where you can put it up or you can bring it with you and turning in at registration. 
that also gives you credit for uh, for meeting your scholarship option uh, requirement or your scholarship requirement of $100 invested or you can apply for a scholarship. They'll also sell tickets. I think they've in the past they've sold draw, uh, raffle tickets for $100, $20 a piece. Is what, you know, so if you wanted to get $100 in, you could buy five of them, be set already with your scholarship amount contributed. But make sure that if you buy a ticket for the at the scholar for the raffle during the scholarship auction, you have to be present. If you leave and they call your na name and you don't show and you're not there, you don't win. So don't even go to the restroom. Make sure or be, make sure you know that, hey, they're getting ready to draw. I'm going to sit here and wait and see if because if you're drawn, if somebody can't find you, get you back there quick enough, they give a time frame for you to show back up. You just made a contribution. Anything else, Heather? I think we covered it all. Looking forward to seeing you guys. Uh, make sure you definitely come out to Buzzard Billy's. Get some good food. I know we picked out a lot of nice appetizers for everybody, some wings and some other things. Um, it should be a good time. I'm looking forward. It's right, to it. And it's right across the street. When I say it is right across the street from the convention center, you walk out, walk down to the corner, press the, press the button to walk across and boom, you're right there. Uh, we're also going to have some of our uh, VIPs there as well. Some of our donors and sponsors will be there with you all as well. So uh, take the time to get to know them and have a great time. We hope to see you in uh, Des Moines, Iowa within, what is it? Gosh, it's like two weeks or so. It's pretty quick. It's coming fast. And, and I know I know, uh, I know, know Iowa and Kapil are, are ready. Uh, we've, we've been in contact with them. So we're going to have a great time in Iowa. Look forward to seeing you there. Thanks, guys.